Science Summary A scientific analysis using data on 123 countries over 25 years shows that a large share of electricity production from nuclear power does not tend to result in significantly reduced CO2 emissions per capita, while renewable energy does. The study finds that tensions between these two national development strategies can reduce their effectiveness in terms of climate change mitigation due to factors such as different infrastructure requirements and limited budgets for energy system investments. Scientists create what may be the first scientific estimate of how much microplastic currently resides in Earth's seafloor after investigating six areas of approximately three kilometers depth, about 300 kilometers off the Australian coast. They found the highly variable microplastic counts to be proportionate to plastic on the surface and the angle of the seafloor slope. By averaging the microplastic mass per cubic centimeter, they estimate that Earth's seafloor contains about 14 million tons of microplastic, about double the amount they estimate based on data from earlier studies. Despite calling both estimates conservative, as coastal areas are known to contain much more microplastic. These estimates are about one to two times the amount of plastic thought to currently enter the oceans annually. Scientists report the development of the first room temperature superconductor, a compound of hydrogen, carbon, and sulfur, in which an electric current can persist without a power source or energy loss at 15 degrees Celsius. They are currently working on reducing its requirement of extreme pressure, which can be created by commonly used research devices. Potential areas of application include the energy system, research devices, computing, transportation, and areas where currently semiconductors are being used. Researchers develop and apply a multi-criteria optimization to prioritize areas for restoration. Their estimated cost-benefit ratio is based on contemporary assignments of value for labor, material input, and yield losses, such as of beef, on the cost side, and biodiversity conservation, local nature benefits, poverty reduction, and climate stabilization on the benefit side. They note that gains are highest when restoration is combined with protection of remaining ecosystems. NASA's spacecraft OSIRIS-REx collects a sample from an asteroid, becoming the third spacecraft to do so. The sample could provide insights into the early solar system, the origin of life on Earth, and options for asteroid impact avoidance. The spacecraft is scheduled to drop the sample off to Earth in 2023. Astronomers report the detection of water on the sunlit surface of the moon outside of the lunar south pole. This indicates that water could be more accessible to potential future lunar missions, which could capture and convert it into oxygen for astronauts or hydrogen for transportation. Daytime temperatures on the moon are hot enough to boil water. The discovery is based on data independently gathered by three spacecraft and new data by the world's only telescope that is mounted on a modified airplane. An analysis of data from around 1980 supports the presence of phosphine in the atmosphere of Venus. The apparent detection of the gas was reported in September and, in the detected concentration, could not be explained by any known abiotic chemical, atmospheric, or geologic process, hinting at microbial life in the harsh atmosphere of the planet. 
The data analysis found a phosphorus signal that fits to phosphine in data gathered with a probe the NASA spacecraft Pioneer dropped down to Venus to measure the chemistry of its clouds. Astronomers report a possible detection of glycine in the planet's atmosphere with the ALMA telescope. The amino acid may be relevant to the origin of life and was found on meteorites earlier. Two independent data analyses, each not yet published by a journal, claim that no statistical evidence for the presence of phosphine on Venus exists and that the data processing was faulty. An analysis of data collected between 2012 and 2015 puts a limit on the possible concentration of phosphine at and above Venus's cloud tops. CO2 emissions decreased by 8.8% in the first half of 2020 compared to the same period in 2019. All four treatments of the World Health Organization's Solidarity Trial are shown to be ineffective. An analysis of mortality effects of the first COVID-19 wave and their determinants, such as pandemic preparedness and management, is published. The largest clinical trial on the effects of vitamin D supplementation on COVID-19, with over 5,000 expected participants, is launched. Two virus variants that started to spread in Spain and France in midsummer account for the majority of SARS-CoV-2 sequences in Europe. Slovakia implements a mass testing approach, testing two-thirds of its population for the virus within a weekend. Alter, Houghton, and Rice win the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for discovering the hepatitis C virus and thereby enabling blood tests and new medicines that have saved millions of lives, according to the Nobel Assembly. Half of the Nobel Prize in Physics is won by Penrose for showing that Einstein's general theory of relativity predicts the formation of black holes. Genzel and Gess win the other half for discovering the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy, Sagittarius A star. Charpentier and Doudna share the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for developing the CRISPR-Cas9 method for editing genomes. A web-like structure with galaxies and dark matter around and likely fueling a quasar when the universe was only 0.9 billion years old, is discovered. This could help explain how such supermassive black holes could have grown rapidly so early. The most comprehensive assessment to date of all global sources and sinks of nitrous oxide emissions is released and shows that these greenhouse gas emissions increase faster than IPCC emission scenarios. The largest, most detailed 3D maps of the universe are released. They combine data from multiple sources, were created using neural network algorithms, and can be queried or downloaded via the web. Researchers show how the Great Barrier Reef's colony size structure changed during its loss of half its coral cover since 1995-96, it mostly lost colonies of small size, followed by large and medium ones. A possible precursor to life is discovered in the atmosphere of Saturn's moon Titan, cyclopropanilidine. Two homo species lost more than half of their climate niche space, climate they adapted to, just before going extinct. The shortest duration ever is measured, a photon traveling through a hydrogen molecule in 247 sextillionths of a second. The largest known extinction event 252 million years ago is reconstructed in a biogeochemical model. Its causes are traced back to volcanic CO2 emissions.
Microplastics exposure by polypropylene infant feeding bottles is found to be between 14,500 and 4.5 million fragments per day per capita. Microplastics release is higher with warmer liquids and similar with other polypropylene products such as lunchboxes. Scientists illustrate how quantum clocks could be in a superposition of two different times via time dilation of the theory of relativity by traveling in superposition of two different speeds. Scientists confirm a small force that is a factor in the orbit of asteroid Apophis, thought to have a very small chance of impact in 2068. A 500 meter tall coral reef is discovered in the Great Barrier Reef by an underwater robot. New estimates of occurrence rates of rocky habitable zone planets via new data and criteria for habitable zones are released about 300 million in the Milky Way and approximately four within 30 light years. A cooking procedure to reduce arsenic content in rice is presented. Boil the rice for five minutes, discard the water, cook until ready.